so I don't I don't ever know what anybody's talking about. So here's the article. Elon Musk should apologize for mocking gender pronouns, says group that gave Tesla top LGBTQ friendly rating. Um There's it, posters of that up in the uh, <laughs> Yeah, in the employee. So specifically oh, let's see if this actually shows what his comments were. I absolutely support trans, but all these pronouns are an aesthetic nightmare. He then pointed out that Tesla had a number one ranking on the corporate equality in- index. Um, Musk's initial tweet included the words, when you put he slash him in your bio, kind of making fun of people who list their pronouns in their bio. Um, oh yeah, here it is. What a tweet. The reception on Twitter was not very friendly to it either. Whoa. Here's Vosh, the Uh, guy I mentioned earlier, says, I don't get it. So, I am not... I cannot comment on (laughs) um, the company's behalf by any means. Right, I understand Um, that. Uh, but yeah, but I have to say it out loud, <laughs> and it's part of the thing. Um, so, and I I don't represent uh, anyone's opinion other than my own personal one. Um, and my personal opinion, I'm not going to make any comments about um, Elon's comments. But my personal opinion is that I would say the frustration that I have with it. Right? I'm cool, dude. If you want to be a lamp. Be a, be the best fucking lamp that you can be, big dog. Like I'm with it. Do whatever you want to do. It ain't, it ain't hurting me. You do you, right? But if you expect me to keep up with this shit in real time, then you you living in a dream world. Like so, I, I will say that out of anyone, not not just um, Elon, but out of anyone that may have ever called it an aesthetic nightmare i i understand the the use of the word aesthetic and i can't think of a better word to use in its place but yeah no i'm with uh i think aesthetic is a proper noun for I kinda, how i would I, I, I kinda, demonstrate my frustration i kind of want to look up the definition of aesthetic like that let's see here. beauty or appreciation because, uh, of beauty yeah, like that. I was like, that's why aesthetic is um, not quite the word that I would use. Well, um, it depends on what you th- what what purpose you think language serves, and that's actually I, philosophically, I think, where even myself and and some people would would disagree quite a bit. You know, I have trans people in my family. I have people who are non-binary in my family that I know and and by family I mean some the family uh, by blood and some the family I've chosen right um, right they, like people very 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 close to me and I sometimes uh, it's really 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 difficult to overcome your personal lifetime of natural responses to certain stimuli like tone yeah, of voice you're talking about environmental conditions visual appearance and all of those factors and i accidentally used the wrong pronoun but i don't mean it i don't intend it and they tend to be pretty understanding about it i think when you flip the switch and you start moving into the uh implied duty thing, right? You have an implied duty to say what your pronouns are as a cisgendered person in your bio. I I think that's what Elon's making fun of here. And I don't think that's a simple case of this this doesn't make him transphobic like many people said for tweeting this. I find that to be highly ridiculous. He's making a point about language. And um and in general, anybody making that point is making the point about language. Like, the purpose and, and of pronouns are to simplify language. So when you take the thing that made language simple and make it more compli- 
complicated. I don't think saying that that's an aesthetic nightmare is uh, is is such a hard concept to wrap your mind around. I think the part that some people aren't willing to admit is that they are making it more complicated um, by yeah, asking people thing, like, to to change. Keeping up with it. Yeah, keeping up with it is the part that I find frustrating. Right, like when people get upset that <clears throat> you haven't immediately unlearned like I'm 32 years old so for 32 years I have been identifying people as him or her right so so um, Robert just to be clear I I think that's part of it I think that's part of who he's making fun of but it was paired with the fact that he said I support trans but these pronouns are an aesthetic nightmare and I think he was referring to the fact that you know, I, I'm sure in Silicon Valley, especially, the the list of different pronouns that people are wanting to use have gotten longer and longer, not shorter. <laughs> and keeping and, track of it is rather difficult. Yeah, like that's that's the the area that I um, that that I frustrate because I have come across people that have been upset when I was like, yeah, no, I would be like, you know, I'm talking to someone and I. I'm talking to person B, right? And this, you know, their person A. And I said, yeah, I was talking to him, referring to person A, and then person A get upset because that wasn't what they wanted, they identified as. And there's no possible way for me to have known in any other thing to you. Yeah. Like, and um, that's the part that I find. Um, not saying that it is a global issue that, you know, everyone that identifies as something else has that same attitude. Just... I have been around those that did, I think, and that that's the part. But I think that's more of a, you're an asshole, and it doesn't really have anything to do with your sexual orientation or, you know, identification, but uh, just that you're kind of a dickhead in general. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> um, so, you know, maybe uh, I attached it to the wrong uh, thing socially. Yeah. Yeah, well... The, the reason I why I with that real bad. <laughs> the reason the reason why I I we're wading into somewhat incendiary waters here, but the reason it reminded me of it is because Elon Musk, on the flip side, uh, has Aspergers, and has come out publicly about that. And I have a daughter with level one autism, which essentially for her means. It doesn't affect her cognitive function, but it does affect her social skills, right? And we are both gamers in the gamer world. We have seen many different uses of the R word and autism to say things negatively. And... <clears throat> That's commonplace. At, at, the R word is getting far less common. It is starting to come down, but what's interesting to me is how some people have used autistic in its place. Or, like, doubled yeah, down on it. I, yeah. <laughs> like, I, uh, that, you know, like, ten years ago, you never, you never heard that. No. No um, one would have said that. And, uh, so, it, yeah, it kind of has a, um, I, well, at first I was going to say evolved into, but it, it, it has devolved into, um, a derogatory term that you see quite often in I you know I played WoW for years so I wasn't really a part of any other communities there for a while but um, inside of uh, WoW in particular in the arena you would uh, get you get whispers from people that inquire about your uh, medical background <laughs> <laughs> your, your intellectual fortitude you might say yeah that's a good phrase for it yeah um, yeah and um, yeah, that word comes up, and so uh, it kind of has devolved into that uh, kind of derogatory term. So, in the place of part of why all that backlash against Elon surprised me, I guess. Let me share my full thoughts on this topic, and then and then I'll um, I'll uh, get your thoughts here. But I think we're confused as a society in a lot of ways, and we don't know how to deal with this problem exactly. And some people have solutions that seem clean, 
that are actually disastrous, and I, and I want to put a spotlight on that. But Elon's an interesting case, right? Because here he is, he said some things that were very mildly critical, and I want to say that, very mildly critical of pronouns, referencing, you know, this case with transgender. And he gets literally articles written about him on every... And part of it is he's Elon Musk, so that's going to happen if you're that popular of a figure. But he said something that, you know, just to borrow the... uh, Not to beat this to death, but the average person thinks, in my opinion. I don't think the average person is looking at this going, yeah, this is really easy to navigate. Um, and, And he points that out. And this is a person who is no stranger to hearing hurtful words because I guarantee you Elon Musk has heard in his life you know, negative words like retard and and autistic thrown around in negative connotations and negative ways that were really, really hurtful. And he has Asperger's. So this is something that he is fully aware of. Granted, it wasn't public that he had Asperger's, I guess, when all this happened. And I think that's a fair point. But I wonder if that would give somebody pause to have that empathetic response to understand that he knows what it's like to hear those kinds of slurs thrown around in these negative connotations. And so that pulls me back to uh, some people's solutions on this is to stop paying attention in any way to intention with words at all. And that, unfortunately, I think is gaining traction. And so I'll pull up a couple reports that are an example of this. But this is a New York Times reporter... Um, he used the N-word when he was trying to understand a girl's story, at least according to his response, and I don't know what's true in this case, but, you know, basically <clears throat> she brought up that she was called the N-word at, like, a function of some kind, and he asked, you know, did they did they do it in a derogatory way, or were they, like, rapping or quoting some song? But when he did it, he actually put the syllables together and made the hard R, which got him fired from the New York Times, which I find to and be... he did this um, at what, like he did it in an interview, or he did it live somewhere? Some kind of function in Peru. Um, let me, let's see if we can find where they talk about it. Uh, a Times-sponsored trip for high school students to Peru in 2019. So it was a work-sponsored event. Gotcha. And a girl asked him the question about what he thought about it, and it was in a context of a conversation around white privilege. And he asked for clarity, did they just call you that in some kind of derogatory way, or were they quoting a song or a rap or something? And he got fired because he uttered the full word. He didn't, you know, use different syllables. And obviously we're on Twitch right now. If I used it right now and put the syllables together, even if I do so... Lifetime ban. Right. Even if I did so in a context where I'm trying to raise awareness and trying to make... Right? That happened to... I can't remember... The the, the word is hard off limits in in all contexts. Right. And and so I'm going to come back to that, but plant a flag there. Because there was another case where a guy did that in a Netflix boardroom, and I don't know if he was like their communications director or something, he was trying to raise awareness uh, about the R word, and so he used both words, right? And he said apparently the R word is just like the N word, you know, to the disabled community, like, basically, the R word is to the disabled community as the N word is to the black community, was his point. So he's trying to make his company better. Fired him. For saying it. I think that's clearly crazy. Um, and we've lost our mind a bit there. Well, the difference in the two scenarios being one was done publicly and one was not. Uh, that's a huge difference in those two scenarios. Um, for You mean for New York Times guy? Yeah, for New York Times versus Netflix, dude. Yeah, like he's in a uh, boardroom trying to like talk to other members of the board kind of thing. Yeah, like um, 
Uh, I, I would say that it would merit disciplinary action, but not termination. Um, I would not uh, terminate someone trying to be constructive and making a misstep. Um, people stumble. Um, it's our job as members of a constructive society to help get them back on their feet when they do. Uh, so it's not our job to destroy them. So is that your um, opinion on on the N word? Is that in any context the syllable should not be uttered together? I think that there are better ways to convey your idea mm. rather than give life to a word that has oppressed an entire group of people for far too long. Do you think that will always be true? Because like I think about contexts like. Um, art, right? Where mm -hmm. something like Django Unchained, some people had a problem with Django Unchained for its, you know, liberal use of the word. Right. <laughs> um, but I don't think it's the same piece of art without it, especially because um, of the time period that it's portrayed in. I can only comment on that as a consumer. Sure. Um, because I'm not an artist. But as a consumer, I would agree that it would take away from the purity of um, representing something <clears throat> for what it was. Right. Um, I think that it is not something that I would put myself in a position to. You wouldn't so have done I it. Would not try and, I would not try to create a piece of art that needed that. Um <laughs> I would steer clear of that area because well, I am not comfortable navigating it. Lucky like, for so, us, Quentin Tarantino drove his car straight into that fucking <laughs> river. Yes, he did. Um, uh, I'm not comfortable enough navigating it, um, so I would never try and do that. Mm. Um, uh, because I think it's important to play in the fields that you're good at. Um, I am not good at that, right? Um, I either over-explain or under-explain, and I can never seem to find the right middle ground, and it just never goes well. Mm. So I just don't do it anymore. <laughs> I tried to find a way to do it. It didn't work out. Um, 